Welcome to Reassessing Your Networking Capacity. I appreciate you being here this, this morning. Uh, before we get started, I'm Jackie Mayo. I am the Class and Events Coordinator for the City of Austin Small Business Program, or Division, excuse me. Um, we bring you all these lovely training opportunities to make you a better entrepreneur, a smarter business owner, and to help you learn how to reach out into your community of entrepreneurs and small business owners so that you guys can create bonds, work together, help one another. And I think today you guys are going to have a, a fantastic opportunity to look at networking in another way. And so before we do that, I want to remind everyone that um, I will put up a Q&A box and if you have any uh, questions for our, our guest today, please put them in there. We'll just kind of keep an eye out for it. Um, Joy Miller, who is the supervisor, um, program manager with the small business program, uh, she will be uh, monitoring that chat room. And with that, I'd like to introduce Ms. Joy Miller to you guys. Good morning. Um, I, want, I have the distinct pleasure of introducing a friend of mine, Patricia V. Hayes. She's an experienced licensed attorney who serves as an executive advisor, career empowerment coach, and authentic networking strategist. She owns her own business. So she's a small business owner that we love, PVH Consulting Group. And I'm gonna just say, you can read tons of great stuff about her on her LinkedIn or Facebook but you are in for a treat because you've got a real professional who, who talks about authentic networking all the time. And I know you're gonna learn a lot. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Patricia. Hello there. Thank you ladies for the generous words and making this happen. I'm super excited to be here as always. And I don't wanna waste any time because there's lots of content to get through and I wanna make sure to share it all with you. Joy has shared my um, information and kind of my background. You know, I'm a licensed attorney and I was a lobbyist for almost 30 years. So kind of the nature of the job is to reach out and connect with people and to try to facilitate those relationships for the long term to achieve a goal. And the same thing applies to each and every one of us. When we start shifting how we consider and think about networking, it will help us to achieve our long-term goals and have sustainable relationships along the way. So that's what we're gonna talk about a little bit today. And as we get started, the one thing I wanna make sure to do is start with a couple of reflection questions as I look to share my screen, if I hopefully will be able to do that. And get to presentation mode. Oop. Let me know when you can. All right, are we good there? You are awesome. Thank you very much. Yay, I'm super excited that it worked. <laughs> All right, so as we, um, and now we'll see if we can make sure we can keep, oh, there we go, we're on reflection. And so this is that first part thing that I always like to start off with. It's a little woo-woo for people sometimes, but it's a good thought-provoking thing that's helpful to you as you go back and re review the materials and the things we, review, we go over today as you're thinking about it. And that is to first of all consider what is it that you really want to get out of this session today? And what is your greatest networking concern or fear? When you can acknowledge what those things are, it kind of resets you and gets you in the mindset of being ready to be open, to receive, to learn what it is that you need and to make sure that you're walking away with the content that you really um, seek to learn. And today's topic, we're talking about reassessing your networking capacity. And in actuality, what we're really talking about is dealing with those myths and those things that affect our confidence and keep us from um, achieving at our best level when we are reaching out and trying to build relationships. And that is what's super, super important here, okay? So 
as we do that, the first thing is, what does it mean to network with confidence? And here's the reality of it. It means that you feel empowered um, to do and to take certain actions that you're giving, you know, with power or authority to, to do those things and that you're making someone yourself stronger along the way, more confident, I mean, especially in, in claiming and controlling their life um, and those and the things that you care about, okay? So when you think about that in terms of just being confident and then when we start engaging in relationship building, what is it you feel when you are confident? And here's the reality. When you're confident, you have a feeling of self-assurance because it's arising from your appreciation of your own abilities or qualities. Did you catch that? Of the appreciation of your own abilities and qualities. And it's also a feeling or consciousness of one's power of reliance um, on one's circumstances. So when you're confident, you just move differently. You just receive things differently. You perceive things differently. And that is at the key and the core of learning how to network and to do so in a way that you can move assuredly as a business owner, as a person in society, so that you can accomplish your goals. And which gets us to the real question. The real question is, why bother? Why are we even talking about all of this? And here's the thing. You have a problem. What's your problem? I don't know. Everyone has a different one. But th that's why I asked you to write down or to consider at the beginning, what is your greatest concern or fear about networking? So you have a problem and there's a potential solution. And when you take that solution and build it in, you have long lasting results that will be able to help you build a high quality professional network that you can rely on for years and years to come. And as small business owners, your network is your money sometimes, oftentimes, because sometimes we don't know where the next opportunity is going to come from. We don't know what's going to lead to the next opportunity. But when you're engaging with those people around you, your fellow business owners, your fellow professionals, your customers, you, because remember, your customers are a part of your network. Those are the things and the people that will help you to build out a sustainable network that will be helpful to you for years to come. Here is one of my favorite, favorite quotes. And it's that by fostering and maintaining your diverse relationships, you raise others' awareness of your abilities by Joel Garfinkel. Here's the thing, you can't get there if you're not willing to share. If you're not willing to engage with other people, you cannot get to that point of raising awareness about you, your brand, your company, okay? So you have to be able to foster those relationships that you need in order to be successful in achieving your goals, both personal and professional, all right? So here's the thing. We're talking about building those relationships and this requires a mindset shift, right? I know a little more woo woo, but it'll be good. Stick with me here, right? It And when we're talking about a mindset shift, we're really and truly just talking about changing the way you think and how you approach things. So think about that time when you had a problem in your business and you were kind of tunnel vision about how to approach it. But when you stepped back, you took in some advice from um, a trusted partner, uh, from an advisor, and when you shifted the way you think, it affected the way you approached your business. The same thing applies here for networking. When you step back, you take off the blinders from the side, you get some great strategies and tips here to help you refocus and re think how you approach networking and what it um, what its purpose is for you in your business and how it can help you, you will open yourself up to a world of opportunities, okay? So here's the thing. We got some networking myths that we have to address, and we're going to address them throughout this session, right? And here's one of the first biggest networking myths, which is that networking is all about happy hour time. 
And that is not true. And when we were doing these things in person, right? I mean, hello, virtual happy hour is a thing that no one expected. So it's not that happy hour disappeared, it just took on a new form. And there are still people who are like completely adverse to it. Guess what? I'm not a happy hour fan either, but I consider myself to be a master networker. And that's because I learned how to build relationships in other avenues. A lot of times when people attend happy hour, it, they are not approaching it with the correct mindset or purpose, right? And so some people go in to quote, quote, have a good time and just be, randomly meet people. And that is perfectly okay. But when you're going to take care of business, you're not going to with that kind of mindset. So one of my, per, one of my examples that I love to give from when I was starting off as a baby lawyer, my job was to attend fundraising receptions. And that meant I had to take the check over to the politician, shake their hand, glad hand, and then mingle with folks. I hated it. Okay. I hated it. It was slimy. It just felt so unnatural. So how did I get over that? Because guess what? That was a part of my job duties. I had to do it. And this is how I adjusted. I changed how I perceived it. My duty was to go attend the event, be seen and hand over the check. But I added something to it and I decided, well, while I'm here, let me think about how, you know, who's going to be there and how maybe I can interact with them. So talk about that collaboration that we're working on with some legislation to follow up on another piece of work that some of us were working on. So it's all in how you approach it and what you think about it. But that myth of networking is all about happy hour time is not true. And you will see some other ways to engage in building quality relationships as we move along. Myth number two is I don't have enough time. This is a very common one and one that we as business owners face all the time because guess what? There's quote, never enough time. We all get 24 hours in a day. We all have the same number of days in a week. And when it comes to something, it's like, oh my gosh, it doesn't seem like there's enough time to do all the things. Here's the thing. The, we always, though, make time for the things that are most important to us. So here's the question. How are you building in, building um, uh, sustainable relationships what, what role does it play in your business plan, in your business engagement? Because when you reframe it, now it becomes something that rises to the level of making time to do it. And it doesn't have to be extensive. We'll talk about that. But it's a matter of putting it into what you do on a regular basis and giving it the proper place that it deserves in order to help you achieve your long-term goals. Myth, myth number three, this is a great one. I get this a lot. I'm an introvert, so I'm bad at networking, or I'm an introvert, so there's no point in me doing that because being in large crowds and all of that, just, you know, I can't handle it. Well, guess what? Right now, what we're dealing with, with continuing to do uh, work high, in a hybrid fashion, some things in person, a lot of things still virtually, introverts technically are, should be in hog heaven, but guess what? They're not. Because the reality is not about engaging with people in person, it's about engaging with people. So it doesn't matter whether it's virtual or in person, that's an issue that someone who considers themselves an introvert has to adjust to and to address for themselves and then to stop making excuses and figure out what fits and what works for them in order to, to network and to build the relationships that they need. Because guess what? Introverts have jobs too. Introverts own companies. You don't get to build a company and say, but I don't really engage with people well, so I'm not gonna do that part. You will not be successful in business or in any profession if you don't address that in some way. And we will talk about what those ways are as we move along. 
Myth number four, that networking is a waste of time. I get this a lot. It probably comes along when people are talking about happy hour and how happy hours are a waste of time. I might not be the person to argue with you about the happy hours being a waste of time. However, networking is not a waste of time because most of the time when people say this, they're not doing it effectively and they're not being strategic. So when you engage in a way that's strategic and that's effective for you, that will change that perception and that mindset so that you can understand it is not a waste of time. Because would you ever say that connecting with that customer who just spent a fortune with your business is a waste of time? No, but whatever time you spent developing that, that relationship is completely worth it. The same difference applies with networking and professional relationship building. Number five, I don't know how, I don't know how to make the relevant connections. This is actually an easy fix and a really soft excuse, okay? Because now you're just talking about strategies and technique. This is something that can be learned. You can learn how to be an effective person who networks and builds relationships, but it takes effort. It takes commitment, all right? It's not something you jump in and out of. I was literally just on a phone call earlier with a connection call with a fellow business strategist, and she was talking about that same frustration we have with clients who just want to jump in and try something one time and then are upset when it doesn't work. Well, you can't make it work with just one, one, you know, with one episode. You have to continue to work. You have to make the commitment so that when it clicks and you get momentum, then you're really moving along. So this is an easy fix. Just think about your, your commitment and your effectiveness. And then lastly, the whole, it, does, it, it won't matter anyways, which ties closely to myth number four about it being a waste of time. Guess what? It does matter. Some of the most valuable relationships that I have today came from unexpected opportunities that I never saw coming and that it may not have been an immediate thing where it paid off. But down the road, all of a sudden your phone is ringing and you're getting that call, right? So it's not a matter if it won't, that it is not a question of that it won't matter. The question is when. And most of us do not have, are not good with patience and we kind of rush along and we want things to happen right away. Well, you know what? That may be great on some occasions, but that is not the norm. Just like you cannot make your business an overnight success, you cannot build relationships that will be effective overnight. It does take time. Here's the thing. You're not start starting from scratch. Most people have a network. They just don't know how to utilize it properly. They don't know how to nurture it and to make it worthwhile for what for their goals and to tie it in. And these are all the things that we're going to talk about today. So here's the thing. All of these myths really relate to a lack of confidence or an insecurity about how you interact with others professionally. That's really what it boils down to. So they end up being a lot of excuse making. Well, that doesn't work for me. And guess what? If you continue with that mindset, no, it is not going to work for you. However, if you are willing to eat a little crow, step back, take on a fresh perspective, there, I assure you that there will be at least one thing that you learned here today that will be effective for you in moving forward and achieving your um, next level goals, all right? So jumping in to our favorite one about happy hour, you know, here's my favorite thing. Networking, first of all, is not a four-letter word. A lot of people think it is. It's not. Um, it doesn't require speed dating events. You know, if you do that, that's for fun. That's the thing you want to do. First Friday happy hours are not required to be effective. 
Making nice with perfect strangers is not required because guess what? When you go and you approach things very strategically and very intentionally, those people who look like strangers, you will be able to bond with and find some common denominator for you to engage in a conversation with or to follow up on. And my favorite, save the trees, save those business cards. I know that's blasphemous. I haven't carried business cards in over three years because I focus on who I'm connecting with and I'm not focused necessarily on handing out 15 or 50 uh, business cards because you can hand out 50 business cards, but if you connect it with no one, it makes no sense. It sometimes, most of the time, is way more effective to hand out five business cards with people that you've actually taken the time to get to know rather than those 50. Trust me, it works okay so we're going to keep marching along here and what we're going to do now is start talking about those top seven tips for overcoming um, myths to leveraging your network confidently all right so we've dealt with those common myths now we're going to we're going to integrate it we're going to talk about where these myths fit in with your ability to move things forward to rebuild your confidence or to build fresh confidence where you didn't and to actually tie down some real strategies that you can utilize right now today. And tip number one, it's gonna sound so simple, but it's the hardest thing for people to do. And that is to just plain and simple, be authentic. What does that mean? I know that's a word that's seeming overused in today's time, but it simply means to be yourself, be your professional self, right? I mean, because let's be true, if your regular self is obnoxious and rude, that's not going to get you anywhere. However, it does, it also doesn't mean you have to assume a persona that's not comfortable to you. That's really what we're talking about when we're being, um, being authentic. This is extremely important for the person who likes to use the introvert piece as a myth, right? That you're, you know, that um, um, your introvert personality, personality. And when you're being yourself, it doesn't matter if you're an introvert or not, because you're being authentic when you engage with people. Quit trying to do things because it worked for someone else. This is the part that gets most people in trouble. You're trying to assume someone else's persona. Yes, you do need to stretch and grow. I am all about that, right? So I'm not saying stay in your comfort zone forever, but you absolutely are within your realm to start there, okay? And to do those things that are, that are comfortable, original, authentic to you, okay? And like I said, authenticity does not equal comfortable, all right? You have to stretch. It's okay to be a little uncomfortable, but you can still be who you are, right? You have to move past, <laughs> move past the ickiness, nice official word there, um, in order to make things happen genuinely, all right? And that's why I talked to you about the political fundraisers that I used to hate, but I knew that I could connect up with other people while I was attending there. So I moved past that ickiness to get the job done, but let's say like, I need to make sure I engage with some other people so that I can keep things moving and be productive for my work. I do the same thing in my business here today. As I've shifted and evolved, I mean, I am connecting with people literally all over the world. Not something that I would have ever thought was possible you know, even just two years ago, but I am, right? And that's because I'm taking a willingness to stretch to still be authentic, you know, chat people up and then connect with them at a very real level, okay? You have to be willing to acknowledge your missteps, okay? That's part of being authentic. Vulnerability is a thing. You just have to lean into it. I'm not saying go tell all your business, but you know those people where you're really connecting with something and you're like, oh my gosh, that makes so much sense. Or that was really what I was going through. I thought I was the only one experiencing that. As small business owners, this is crucial. Those conversations that you may have with another business owner or someone who's supportive of you for 10 or 15 minutes can make all the difference in your next move. Okay. It can make all of the difference in your next move. Just be willing to
to share a little and put yourself out there. So when you're doing it, I already warned you, I love reflection time. You want to make sure that you take some time to engage and to think about how you have actually been interacting with your network. It's all about honesty, all right? It's very crucial at this point. It's not judgment. It's not something you have to share with someone unless you want to. But when you give a real assessment of where you are and what you're doing, this is something I do, if not daily, probably at least weekly, right? Uh, some of you who know or if you see me, like I have, I reserve a full day. Normally it's Wednesdays to networking and I just consolidate. It doesn't mean I, I don't do it the other days. I do. But when I'm behind, I know that Wednesday is my day to focus completely on it and to catch up with people, whether I'm connecting with people um, who are fellow, you know, coaches and um, strategists to kind of get a feel for where they are in their business, learning from them and those connection calls, or whether I'm following up with someone that I've sent a proposal to, and I'm just reaching out to say, hey, how are things going? I would love to get on the phone and chat. Let me know when you're available or attending, you know, a virtual networking event or activity. I do that utilizing all the tools that are um, to your advantage. But taking that weekly reflection reminds me of, oh my gosh, I got behind on this. Let me go back. Let me see who I need to connect with that I didn't quite do it. So we, we fall behind. It's okay, right? Don't judge yourself about it. But what where is it that you are engaging? What are you doing to engage with your network in, um, in the way that's best for you? And if you're like, I really haven't been doing much at all, it's okay, start from there, all right? Very important. All right, we're gonna move on to tip number two, which is you have to be consistent. This trips up everybody, all right? This is that try to be do something one time, it doesn't work, and then you're like, see, well, I told you it wouldn't work. One time does not make successful relationships. It doesn't make for a successful business. We know that we have to keep going at it, okay? And what you have to do is develop the flow that works for you, all right? Um, that I don't have enough time and I don't know how to make relevant connections. That's, those are the two myths that really fit in here. But you have to be consistent. And it's one of those difficult things. But once you find your rhythm, it's really, really great. As a result of this, I mean, I've had people talk about this all the time. I literally created um, some 30-day uh, consistency challenges focused just on networking because of this, right? And it's to get you in the mindset, to get you in the habit of engaging every single day so that you can then have the flexibility of saying, okay, I'm gonna do this every couple of days. I'm gonna do something once a week. It's about the flow, but you have to start off uh, probably a little aggressively in order to build the habit. The baby steps are what's important here, right? You don't wanna overwhelm yourself. It truly is the thought that's, that counts and that matters as you're starting off, but you want to start doing it. So I'm going to describe something super aggressive. This is me. And when I started out my business 11 years ago, I was I had been inside. I was a C-level a uh, person in a university system going from you know, being around tons of people all the time to working in an office by myself, right? I mean, like that's going from one extreme to the other. So I had to create those opportunities to continue to engage with people. And so I kept a super aggressive schedule for years, okay, until it just became habit. And so my goals were to reach out to 10 new people a week, and to schedule, you know, 10 or 15 new people per week. And I literally kept a calendar. I kept a journal of it. I still have those journals today as proof that I did it. And then also I would schedule two to three coffee meetings per week. Okay. Uh, coffee or lunch. And th that's the schedule I kept. When I fell off, I always knew because the momentum I would build would suddenly slow down and would get a little quiet. And that's when I could literally go back to my calendar and say, ah, here's where you fell off. Let's get back on, you know, let's get back up and get going again. All right. Everybody can't do that. I don't expect everybody to do that. 
However, there is no excuse for anyone not to reach out to at least five people per week, all right, in some format or another. And here's the thing, when I tell people you do that five people a week, two or three people, you know, every six or seven days, whatever it might be. If I told you to go out and make connections with 200 new people, everybody here would be like, oh my gosh, I can't do that. However, if you do the math and you do what I suggest, guess how many people you will have connected with over the course of a year? Exactly. So it's all about those baby steps. It's about being consistent over time. So whether your actions are happening every day or every couple of days or once a week, I would not take it any less than that. Um, but if you're doing that and you're consistent and you set a time for doing that, that is how you get um, consistent and you build that consistency muscle, okay? Um, show up, same way, same place, and keep going. So here's a, um, another great quote that I love. It says that all the time and effort put into networking can be all about all for naught if there's no follow through. The same goes for sales and leadership and well, everything. I love that Beth Ramsey says that. None of us can get back lost time. That's the, that's the bottom line there. But five minutes a day can absolutely build your confidence and consistency in ways that you cannot imagine. All right. Yesterday during my networking day, I actually spent a good portion of the day doing a photo shoot. Here's the thing, um, which was tons of fun, but I did it with my videographer, you know, photographer. Guess how we met? We met online in the middle of or at the beginning of the pandemic. So a year ago online, we met, we connected, we talked through things and we did things virtually. We literally had never met in person until yesterday. Completely blows my mind, right? But that is the relationship that we built over the course of a year and a half and staying connected and doing whatever work we could in a virtual format so that when we met in person, it was like we, we'd known each other for five years, not a year and a half, all right? It is possible. All right, we're on to tip, tip number three. Let me make sure we do a little time check. Tip number three is be focused. Um, <clears throat> this is the, the dealing with that myth of I don't know how, right? Be focused. Targeted focus will help to build your confidence and your consistency. Don't be scattershot. That's the thing that gets people off task, right? When they're just jumping all over the place, right? I don't care. You make the decision on what works for you. If it's, you know what, I'm going to reach out to five people every week by mail, by email, or I'm going to make five phone calls each week, right? Or I'm going to schedule a Zoom coffee, right? Or I'm going to schedule a socially distanced coffee meeting, whatever it takes. You make the decision, but be focused about it. And that will be extremely helpful to you. All right. Here's the thing, the focus really does matter, but it's just like consistency, it's really something that can get you off track very quickly, right? And we'll talk about it a little bit later about how to use technology to remind you of what it is you want to do and when. And guess what? We all have those lovely little phones, electronic calendars, all of those things. I keep an electronic calendar and a paper calendar. I know, classic overachiever, but they work for me because of the system that I've created in order to keep moving myself forward, right? The paper calendar for me is really about forcing me to take that time to reflect. Whereas my, you know, the, the electronic one is the ping, you know, it's the, hey, here's what you're supposed to do next today. So do, do whatever works for you using whatever scheduling tools. We'll talk about some other things um, in a little bit, but the focus really does matter. If you're running your own business, you know that, you know, the power that comes from being focused. All right. Here's tip number four. You got to create a networking st strategic plan that's for you. And the easiest way to do this is I say to remember the five simple questions, who, what, when, why, and how, All right? Literally, if you can answer those questions, that 
This will address all of your networking myth issues that you, um, that you may have, okay? Now, I have a more detailed method in my career strategy planning that I use with my clients, but it really does come down to these five questions. And remember, the point is that this is for you, okay? When you're working through that, who do you want to meet? What is it you want to accomplish? When do you want to get it accomplished by? Why, do you, why are you bothering? And how are you going to do it? Those are the things that you're working through that you're thinking about as you're moving forward with this work. And guess what? That means it's being customized to you. This is not, like I said before, about assuming someone else's persona. Can you learn some things from someone else? Absolutely. But when you take it and try to make it your own, uh, or let me, not, let me not say make it your own because I want you to make it your own. But when you take something and you literally try to overlay it onto your life and presume it will work just like that, most of the time it will not. You do have to make it your own and do what works for you and create a plan that's customized to you. That's really the work that I focus on when I'm working with people um, in my group and one-on-one -on -one coaching. All right, here's the thing. Um, you cannot wait until you need relationships to develop them. This is from Judy Robinette, who has this great book about being a power connector and these rules. And in summary, the book really gets to the point of, you don't have to have 500 connections. You don't have to have 5,000 connections, right? Basically, if you have five to 50, you can multiply those people. It's all about the strategy. It's about nurturing. It's about being consistent, right? And the same thing is true. The crucial mistake is people wait to the last minute and then try to go ask people for things. That does not work if you have not taken the time to build the trust that's needed in order to make a significant ask in a crisis moment, okay? And so what happens is a lot of times confidence, you know, the, a lack of confidence arises because these people haven't nurtured those relationships. They're scared to ask, even though you really need to. And then you just created the snowball effect on things, all right? That's not what you want to do. But if you're taking those steps every day to reaching out to people, touching, having touch points, then you're building not just your confidence, but you're building that sustainability so that when you get to that difficult situation or, oh my gosh, I really need to call this person to ask for some help, you have built the trust to be able to do so. All right, super important. We all know what it looks like because we've had to, that happens in our businesses all the time, all the time, okay? So when you're working through this, you wanna develop a plan of action that I talked about that's personalized to you. Who do you know? What organizations do your friends belong to? What organizations do you belong to? Um, uh, what, what are the organizations or places you want to be a part of, but you're not right now? And what groups should you belong to? Because it makes good business sense. Okay. All of these things are things that play into it. Start small, take the baby step. So maybe you take that $50 this month <clears throat> and you attend a luncheon, right? Or you attend a seminar virtually. Yes, do it. <laughs> um, or maybe you take that $100 and you go join some professional association that you've been meaning to join, right? That one investment can multiply because it gives you access to other people who have similar interests to you because it's a group, right? And that then you can leverage and continue to build relationships from there. All right. Heidi Krupp says that the most valuable tools when building and growing a business and your greatest assets are the relationships you've built over the years. I believe this wholeheartedly. It's why I spend the time doing this work because people underestimate the power of their personal relationships, their professional relationships. And when you step back and look at it with fresh eyes, 
You have so many opportunities right in front of you. We just need to utilize them. So here's the thing. Here's how um, you learn what to do. You've got to reach out. You've got to reach out. And there's part one and a part two to this, right? You have to go places. You have to engage with people. And you must do the follow-up. Follow-up is golden. Like, that is my mantra. The gold is in the follow-up. The unfortunate part is most people do not do the follow-up that's necessary in order to really launch them to the next level of what they're trying to do, whether it's to uh, reach a certain goal in their business, is whether it's to complete a project. If you don't follow up, you are missing out, all right? Tracking your time, tracking your activity over time will also do wonders for your confidence as you realize how much you have accomplished. So when Clubhouse started, for those of you who don't know, Clubhouse is a new kind of audio app. So it's the latest, greatest thing when it comes to um, social uh, media platforms. And when I first started, I was kind of like ho-hum. I'm like, yeah, I don't know about this. But I started. And then when I decided, I'm like, you know what, let me start being deliberate about this. So when I started being deliberate and says, I am going to engage at least five times a week on Clubhouse, right? I don't have time to be on there all day long like some people, but I'm going to be very strategic. I'm going to engage with a few certain uh, groups and uh, um, and uh, and uh, uh, rooms that I've identified, and then I'm going to you know see what happens. Well, guess what happened when I started being deliberate about it, about and being focused about it. I saw an immediate a response to that because Clubhouse connects itself to Instagram. And when people want to see what you're doing, what you're about, they go to your Instagram, right? So they go from your Clubhouse um, uh, profile to your Instagram. And I literally went from and gained almost 200 followers in a couple of months on my Instagram simply from being consistent and showing up on the Clubhouse app, okay? Why does that matter for me? I'm a speaker, I'm a coach, and the more I get exposure of myself to uh, getting myself exposed to people and the right people in the right ways, that, that builds momentum for me. And that's where I've had some fabulous conversations with women from all over the country and the world, connecting with them, and then them, you know, sending me on to someone else. Like, hey, I think I have someone who's interested in some of your work. So that is what can happen as a result of taking, you know, having a plan and following through on it. Okay. The second part of reaching out is about the strengthening and maintaining of your relationships. I feel strongly about calling before you need something. So sending an email just because, you know, my favorite thing is handwritten notes. I love that. I still do it. The, this, the pandemic has made it a little bit more difficult but because people aren't in their offices, but I still manage to follow through uh, writing some handwritten notes. Um, but calling before you need something is always a great strategy. OK, it's about checking in, showing that you care about people, just like you do when you reach out to your customers, when you have a customer appreciation activity, um, all of those things mean something. All right. Tearing your contacts. This is one of the strategies I've done for years. And it basically basically means I know who my people are. I have you know, connections and relationships with hundreds of people. I do not reach out to hundreds of people every single month. But I do know those people that I that are pretty new to me, maybe I'm reaching out to them a little bit more at the beginning, right? Two or three times a month. So we kind of get a feel for each other. We figure out what our relationship is really going to look like long-term versus those people that I've known for decades, like my mentor, and we literally may talk on the phone or lay eyes on each other physically once a year. But guess what? That relationship is just as strong as ever, right? So from the checking in with people, you know, multiple times a week, you know, because if you're working with someone, you know, you're working on a project, you're, you're having a lot more interactions 
versus someone that you've known for 20 years and maybe you only connect a few times a year, but it's always valuable. So that's what I mean about tiering your contacts, knowing who you need to nurture and stay in touch with more versus those that you have a little more flexibility with. And then of course you have to share, right? You gotta share. If you don't put yourself out there, you're not going to get the exposure that you need. And as small business owners, we absolutely, that is a core piece of what we do, okay? Um, number six, this is where we start talking about some of the technicalities of things, right? Leverage your technology, right? There are all, first of all, our phones really and truly are still part of our technology suite, whether we want to recognize it or not. Um, having coffee with people, um, using Slack, using Zoom, all of these things are opportunities to engage with people on a regular basis. So it doesn't matter if you're introvert, extrovert, ambivert, I don't care what your personality type, there is something and some way for you to start reaching out to people and to engage, all right? Start low and slow and start stretching yourself, right? If you're not one of those people that's normally really good on camera, that doesn't mean you stay away from Zoom. Turn your uh, video on when you go to a happy hour virtually or when you go to a seminar. Don't hide behind the camera, okay? Engage in the chat. Ask the questions, right? Follow up with people. These are, these are all simple things that anyone can do. Um, tip number seven is to make sure and leverage your social media. I talked about it a little bit um, when I was talking about Clubhouse, but LinkedIn, LinkedIn is golden for me, right? That's where a lot of my clients really work and reside. It's a great space. Facebook still works for some people and Instagram, whatever the social media, so, social media is here to stay, right? If you are not engaged in a social media strategy of some sort as a small business owner, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you shift <laughs> and you go uh, get a consult with a social media strategist about how to engage it in your business. Because it doesn't matter whether you do um, are engaged in an online virtual business like I am or whether you have a um, brick and mortar store you do have to have a social media presence of, presence of some kind um, to affiliate with your business because that is how you gain the trust of people, how people get, you get to know people. And, you know, like I said, that no like trust factor. All right. And here we are. Networking is here to stay. I think I just said that. Beth Douglas Silcox says, whether we realize it or not, networking is part and parcel of everyone's life. Our concentric circles of relationships from business, the ball field, church, and school impact our lives. What we choose to do with them is up to us. And that is what I have for you today. I hope I made up for time uh, on the uh, under the late start, and I'm um, open for questions. Thank you so much, Patricia. I feel like I've learned a lot for sure. Yeah. Uh, maybe I could take my networking game to the next level. So <laughs> Gloria has asked a question. Uh, what are your recommendations in regards to networking for your new business with people at an old or current day job? Yes. Um, the way this is a, I call the transition period for a lot of people. And this is where you want to take a little more care because more than likely the people you really want to connect with, they may, they may be at your old job or current job, but it may be even further back, right? So look at some of the organizations you've been a part of in the past because there may be some additional people for you to dip into and you want to be very focused. And so you want to talk to those people who were either um, very supportive of you, regardless of what it is you were working on. I call them your personal cheerleaders, right? So that person who was always like, hey, how are you doing? What's going on? You know, following up with them because that's the person who will be like, hey, I just heard Joy is doing this new venture. You should go check her out. That's why you go, you go talk to your personal cheerleaders, your own fan club first. That's where I always start. I also highly suggest that, you know, if you've stepped out 
and um, you're totally out and you had a good relationship with one of your former bosses, I always suggest that get at least one of your former bosses or supervisors on board, because quite frankly, you never know when you will need that support, not so, so much for the business, but it's shifting to help you as a mentor from a leadership perspective. See, people think that when you have someone that your mentor has to be doing exactly what you're doing. That is not true right? Sometimes it's helpful, but sometimes you get a fresh perspective from someone who is not doing exactly, and they can ask you questions that you were like, oh, it really was that easy. I hadn't thought of that. So think about it in those, in that, in those terms of your former supervisor or a boss or something like that as potentially being a leadership mentor for you to check back in on. When I transitioned from my um, from my C-suite job to um, going to my, my uh, legislative consulting business, I had one of my, my, actually my first boss is one of the people I reached back out to. And she was like so supportive of me and actually fussed at me that I hadn't come to her sooner, right? So you will, you are, you will be surprised at the people who are out there who are willing to support you, but it's just about being focused about it, being deliberate about it over time. You don't have to feel like you have to go, you know, spam everybody all at once. It's not effective that way. Thank you, Patricia. So Julianne is asking, when do you know it's time to move on from a networking group? Ooh, to move on from a networking group? Mm -hmm. Ooh, I love that question. Okay. So two things, um, and one of the ones, whether it's a networking group or an organization, or let's get personal, a group of close friends, right? Here's the key. When you feel like you're the person everyone's calling all the time and they're over relying on you, but you don't have anyone to rely on when it's time for you to ask the question, that's when it's time to move on. Because that means you're not, everyone is reaching up to you and you don't have anyone to reach up to when you need the support, right? And so um, there's a saying about how you want to be, and this goes against conventional wisdom because people and their egos, but you, especially from a business perspective, you want to be the small fish in a big pond because if you're the big fish in a small pond, that means you're the one people are, are reaching up to all the time and you don't have anyone to lean on. And I've had to do this a couple of times. It's, it's a difficult decision sometimes because sometimes we like being the big fish in a small pond. We like people reaching out to us, but that doesn't always do anything for our personal and professional development and growth. So we have to, if you want to, I say this all the time now, if I want to own a million dollar business, I cannot keep talking to people who are working $50,000 a year jobs because they don't know anything about running a million dollar business. That means I have to put myself in places that are not comfortable, but it's totally worth it for my long-term growth. Great question. Julianne says, ooh, that's a great answer. <laughs> And it and I was actually going to say, Patricia, that I actually like the fact that you there's a hierarchy. It, it just keeps building and building. And if the building stops here with you, then that's really not networking, is it? Because no. you have to have someone who's going to be able to go up one and keep going up one and going up one and going up one in order and for it to all out. come back down and go back yeah. out. And, and that's the other down. thing, expanding for depth and breadth. And people want to just kind of go because they're like, oh, they want to be the big cheese on top. But guess what? That, that stuff falls. You don't have any support underneath you if you're not, if you're not building a sustainable in a sustainable way. And you probably already addressed this. But my question is, is why is networking just so difficult for people to just say that they're that they're going to do and sustain and you may have uh, already answered that but no it's no it's a it's a good question that, that bears repeating and it's there are two things that if you ask any random person 
um, in business, professionally, whatever, if they ask what are their two top things that they hate doing, normally the first one is public speaking and the second one is networking. Like there's just research on, I mean, I could say it without even going, needing to go confirm it because it's literally networking is the number two thing. And the most of the time it's that fear of putting yourself out there, right? People feel exposed so they're scared. And so then they make up all these excuses about why they can't do that. When the reality is they're feeling very vulnerable and they're scared to reach out, right? And you have to get over that. That's an internal thing. That's not necessarily external. Are there some times when you have an experience that's nasty, negative? Yeah, but that's on that person. You don't allow that to keep you from building forward for what it is you want to do. But a lot of times it's just good old fashioned fear, and it's, I mean, it's just good old fashioned fear. And it's the, oh, what do you think you're doing from other people? So then that's the, the negative Nelly that's sitting on your shoulder and you have to brush those people aside as well. Because if you want to achieve at the next level, you have to shift the people you're with. It's just a bottom line thing. It's a bottom line thing. I mean, and, and if you're trying to grow, it doesn't always mean that the people in your circle go away. It just means that you don't engage with them at the same in the same way. I like that. Does anybody else have any questions? You can put them in the chat box. Um, I really appreciate you being here today, uh, Patricia. Absolutely. I, um, Thank you for bearing through the technical difficulties earlier. And also <clears throat> for our attendees, I did put up a poll. Um, it's, it's actually an evaluation. If you could complete that for us, that would be extremely helpful. It's quick and easy, two questions. Um, I already see that there's four people. Um, so there's somebody, there's a few missing. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking to you to complete that. As you know, most of you who have attended our classes know that these uh, feedback is extremely important to us as well as to our speakers because uh, it lets them know if they've hit the mark. And if they haven't, they wanna know why they haven't hit the mark so that they can go back and redo it again. Um, and again, if you guys have any other questions um, you wanna ask, please feel free. Um, I really love that question from Julianne. It's been one of those and, and then of course, next week, um, same uh, not the same time, but next week yes. um, at 9 a.m. to 11, we are going to, Patricia will be back with a workshop that's gonna be talking about building your professional relationships in a crisis. Um, we've been in this pandemic for what, how long ago? Over a year now, about a year and a half. Yep. And a lot of, people have kind of sunk into a new way of moving within their groups, their business. Um, I have to say, I like being at home sometimes and you know, I'm not around a lot of people. People are zoomed out. And so tell us a little bit of, just give us a little snippet of what we can expect yes. next Thursday. Um, you know, um, what, man, this session that I'm going to do next week literally came out of the pandemic. It was not one. And what happened was last spring when the pandemic hit, I normally have, you know, Jackie and Joy know I do a lot of public speaking or whatever. And I normally have stuff lined up. And it was very weird because even before the pandemic officially hit, February was really quiet for me and it was very strange and it bothered me. I was like, oh my gosh, what's going on? And then March came and the pandemic hit. And I was like, oh, oh my God. Like if February, which is one of my most busy months was so quiet, like it's just gonna go downhill from here. And then I sat back and I was like, you know what? We're not gonna, let, we're not gonna go that route. And so I just, just continued using some of the techniques I gave you all. And I learned that people were, we were all going through this thing and no one knew how to address it, much less keep up with each other. And so I just literally along after some months just figured out, you know what, I'm going to start talking about what's facing people right now, which is how do you maintain relationships and nurture them in the middle of a crisis? 
And I, it started off literally as a, I think I did it as a coffee chat. I do my coffee chats twice a week. I started off as that. And then it evolved to a presentation that I believe I've given um, over 10 times since then in some form or another, um, because it really struck home for people and learning how to like, you know, guess what? You can do it. Let's humanize people. Let's be focused because it's really important to our ongoing personal and professional development and, and how, it's, how it will build and, feel and sustain you when we're past this time. So that's really what this workshop is gonna do, a deeper dive. This is not gonna be a one hour, like we're gonna have time to like really kind of sit in some things, put some practice in place, Build, you'll get to, you know, build your own plan with me. And so that's what I'm looking forward to doing next week. And if you haven't registered for it, you know, there's still, there's still some space available. Um, so get in there and, and register for it. I think um, you've sat through this one. I think now here's some time. Here's the next week where you can actually put this all into practice and um, really start building out your plan because um, we don't know what the future holds for us right now. And um, you need to be able to sustain those networking groups that you have created, that you have joined, um, or that you plan to build. Yes. So, um, and we want to see you build them. Correct, Patricia? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, the mistake that people have made, because you know, we didn't know how long this pandemic was going to happen when we started. And the mis mistake people made was like, oh, I'll do it when this is done. And we're a year and a half in and it's not done. So guess what? You've lost 16 months, but it's okay. We can start fresh now. And so you don't lose another 16 months. And, and Will you be, will you be able to, before we, we wrap up, something just popped oh. into my head. Um, I know a lot of people, you know, now that we are in this pandemic, a lot of people are doing different types of networking. I know mm -hmm. that Joy belongs to a book club that they meet mm -hmm. virtually. That can turn into a business networking opportunity. Can you just talk a little bit about that? Oh yeah, I mean that's that's always been a part of my my strategy. I tell people all the time there there are so many people I connected with from sitting out in the heat watching my son play football or sitting in dance convention halls for hours on end when my daughter was performing a lot and going to dance conventions. So th there are some of those relationships that I've built out that are just fantastic. I mean, one a couple I'm thinking right now of a couple of performers who literally we met through my daughter's dance. They came to teach master classes at her dance studio um, six, seven years ago. We have stayed in contact with them. And now that she's going out to California for, for school, guess who's on the at the top of her list to stay in touch with? Because I taught her how to keep in touch with them. I've kept in touch with them separately because I'm like, hey, I appreciate some of the things you guys are doing as artists. So I want to develop my own relationship. And that's like six, seven years in. And now we still have it. Um, you know, so it doesn't matter how old you are. I mean, my daughter used one of these performers. She was a Broadway performer, world class, traveled the world, uh, was in Chicago, the national performance of Chicago. She, she was like, oh, of course I'll come do this. You know, I'll come be one of your presenters or one of your guests on your, um, for your, your gold award project. I mean, like these are the things that can happen simply because you continue to reach out with people, reach out to people and you do not know where that's going to lead. So it's not just saying, oh, everything has to be business, business, business. Sometimes, you know, some of the best people that you end up connecting with long-term are folks that you connected with personally just for fun. And then you're like, hey, I have this little project. And they're like, you know, I know somebody. Happens all the time. That's awesome. That is great. Well, Patricia, I want to thank you for giving up of your time this morning and thank afternoon. You. And um, I look forward to going through the workshop with you next week, a week from today, you guys, 9 to 11, uh, Building Professional Relationships in a Crisis. It's a workshop. 
Uh, you can still register and get in there and um, tighten up your networking skills. Let's see you. I want to see you. Um, again, thank you, Patricia, for being here today. Thank you guys for joining us today and working with us through our technical difficulties. Um, if I don't see you anytime soon between today and tomorrow, please have a great weekend and enjoy the rest of your day. And I hope to see you guys next Thursday. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Thank you.